All right, AP Hug Team, we're back with part two of our discussion of our agriculture revolutions. Um, so you see on your screen right now, we have our second agriculture revolution that is closely tied to the discussion of the Industrial Revolution. Um, truly, the second agriculture revolution allowed the Industrial uh, Revolution to begin. And interesting enough, uh, you know, we talked about the Neolithic Revolution over 12,000 years ago. It wasn't until the 1700s that really we see um, kind of this phase two necessarily maximize um, agriculture for society. Now we can really focus on England as the heart of the second agriculture revolution. Um, some necessarily notable things that are included with this piece, which is on your screen right now, something known as the Enclosure Acts. Now the Enclosure Movement or the Enclosure Acts were a series of acts that were passed by Parliament that necessarily made it easier for the wealthier landowners to uh, buy up or uh, uh, enclose or build fences around some of these smaller um, farms. So you can see right here kind of, you know, checkered board sketch in terms of all these little plots of uh, land. Um, you can see kind of after how you can necessarily group that into large lawn, uh, land masses. Now the whole concept is the fact that over here we didn't, this sort of land use pattern wasn't as efficient as necessarily taking these large plots of lands where these wealthier uh, landowners could begin experimenting with more efficient ways in terms of agriculture. Now of course you can't deny the fact that these wealthy landowners were necessarily allowed to gobble up or um, buy this land out from other um, small farmers is definitely going to create a multitude of social effects as well because we're going to see once uh, these plots of land are bought up, of course these far family farmers, uh, they need work, where are they going to go? And we see definitely see a migration into cities uh, where these uh, farmers are going to look for jobs and in the factories of the Industrial Revolution. Now with the influx of poor people moving to the cities looking for jobs, another big component of the Industrial Revolution was the improvement of transportation. So, um, uh, part of transportation, we have uh, societies, especially England, experimenting with new forms of energy. So we're thinking by the onset of a water powder power or looking at coal or looking at the introduction of the steam engine, which is then going to be harnessed for the locomotive, uh, the railway, uh, steamships. So with increase of transportation, of course, now we can necessarily transport food um, to far off places, which is going to create new markets. Um, and that influx of new markets, of course, is going to stimulate even more so more uh, determination and more investment into the development of uh, more efficient agricultural practices to meet the demand from these new markets. All right, so with uh, pushing for uh, that demand from those new markets, we also see the second agricultural revolution is going to introduce a multitude of new inventions and devices that are going to try to improve efficiency. So, for example, um, horses are introduced necessarily as a labor, labor source or labor source or, or necessarily the beasts of burden that are doing the, the hard work around the field. We see the introduction of collars, again, to harness that a horse and animal um, uh, energy. Uh, we see the introduction of field drainage, improvement of irrigation. We see storage, and we also see... Um, Understanding soil nutrients, um, and a big part of that is uh, the discussion part of the Industrial Revolution, or the Agriculture Revolution, is the introduction of something called crop rotation. Now, some images on the screen just to kind of introduce. In the top right portion, you can see kind of the old school method that was traditionally used, which is the three-field system. Now, in this particular system, the common practice was to use two fields that were cultivated, and then you would leave one field, what is called fallow. Fallow meaning uh, it's empty and it gets a chance necessarily to regenerate and making sure that um, those nutrients are allowed to replenish in the soil. Of course, the fear over time, if you keep planting the same crop over and over and over again, you're gonna not necessarily have a soil that's less vitamin rich and those minerals and nutrients that you need for a vibrant uh, harvest or crop yield. So with crop rotation, um, the basic principle is the fact that you never have to necessarily leave one field empty, 
but you necessarily section it off that you can use these different portions of the field for a multitude of reasons. So if you're using necessarily uh, turnips, for example, that adds necessary, gives an opportunity to clean some of the soil, if you're planting wheat, if you're planting barley, and then a portion of the field could be planted for clover. Now the clover is not wasted because the clover can necessarily um, serve as a grazing field for your animals. And honestly, while those animals are grazing, they're also, so to speak, depositing a uh, valuable fertilizer that also can necessarily recharge and um, uh, re renew the, the soil in question. So really what you have it is a system where the soil is being productive 12 months out of the year. You're necessarily using it for um, at max efficiency of trying to either grow your crop, recharge your soil, or uh, feed your animals. Now something else that was introduced in this time period was something known as selective breeding. So selective breeding is used for both plants and animals. And um, in many cases, this was another way, and we're talking about wealthy landowners. Remember, they're the ones that have the money to invest in the land and the technology. Uh, but selective breeding it involves, um, for example, sheep and cow. For the cow, necessarily breeding to make sure that the cow is nice and fat, which is going to necessarily have a good meat. Uh, think about, for example, sheep, the fact that you want them fluffier and, and more wool, more fiber to, um, to uh, necessarily shear, to make uh, clothing and other items out of. We also see selective breeding for uh, cows, that we have uh, more milk supply or even a sweeter uh, milk supply. And of course, even tying it to plants, trying to make them more resistant to drought. All right, so before we move on though, just a quick little review. So kind of like a timeline of events for the second agriculture revolution. Um, so we see farming innovations develop. And again, primarily one of the reasons is we see that introduction of the enclosure movement. So we have things like the metal plow, the horse collars, all those interventions and inventions. Um, we see the introduction of crop rotation. And so with these types of themes, we're going to see that more food can be produced with fewer workers. Now, if we have fewer workers being in the fields, of course, where do they go? Uh, farm workers lose their jobs on the fields and move to the cities that are, of course, that are seeking jobs. Now, workers get jobs in factory, factories, creating more factories to make more goods. The Industrial Revolution makes machines that further benefit agriculture, like uh, the seed drill, we could even incorporate the discussion of the cotton gin. I know most of you recognize that from even back in eighth grade history, which was essential in terms of even connecting to American history. The, who, the huge boom of cotton and plantation agriculture in the United States with the introduction of Eli Whitney's cotton gin. Um, so more people leave the rural areas to uh, work in the factories. And of course, we're definitely going to have a solid uh, historical background when we even tie this to uh, our, one of our units in second semester, which is looking more specifically at industry um, and economic development uh, round two, so to speak. All right, the last piece that I want to end here is a lot of people in, in history will talk about kind of the later part of the second industrial revolution or more so the later 1800s, where we see the, a more a globalization and industrialization. Um, we could even probably interject the, the, the discussion of the Columbian Exchange where we see uh, the diffusion of new types of um, plants and animals necessarily introduced uh, to new environments and we see an increase of the food supply. Um, later on as we continue kind of moving on in terms of the history of agriculture, we're going to see that kind of the next phase is the introduction of agricultural production, uh, the use of fertilizers, pesticides, when we start going into our discussion of the Green Revolution. And also we see more so where uh, farming and food production is more specialized. And nowadays we don't necessarily um, think about where our food comes from. Um, and in this case we have what is called kind of the farm to factory, where necessarily we harvest the vegetables, but they are necessarily shipped back to the cities or shipped back into the factories. And then they are processed in some way or maybe canned in some way and they're, then they're necessarily shipped out for um, consumption. All right, let's go ahead and finish up strong with, uh, we'll go ahead and put two quiz questions just to make sure that you are uh, ready to go before we move on. So quiz question number one, it says the second agriculture revolution occurred roughly the same time as 
Give yourself for a minute or so. No Cheater McCheaterson. Jeopardy music playing in your head. And the correct answer would be B, the Industrial Revolution. So we're talking about the mid-1700s, and we know there's a direct correlation between the second agricultural revolution and the discussion of the Industrial Revolution. Question number two, a little trickier one regarding the enclosure movement. It says the enclosure movement changed farming in England during the 18th century by... Take a moment to read over your answer selections. Maybe start off with a little practice, process of elimination, which one we can automatically cross off our list. Maybe cross off one other one that we know is for sure off the list. Maybe get it down to a 50-50 option, and the correct answer is... A, the consolidation of many small farms into fewer large farms. So we know, again, those small family farmers, their plots of land were bought up, and necessarily the wealthier, more elite class of England was able to uh, maximize uh, the amount of land, and then again, more investment in terms of experimenting with new techniques, crop, crop rotation, uh, introduction of new technology. So the correct answer would be A. All right, do yourself a favor for both uh, part one and part two of the Agriculture Revolution uh, lecture. Take a moment to go ahead and summarize some key points, go through, annotate, um, and remember folks, repetition is key, so make sure again as the course of even through next week as we're looking ahead to a glorious week off, make sure you're revisiting our discussion of the Agriculture Revolutions. All right, I'll see you guys in class. Have a beautiful day.